Welcome back. Wasn't Sam great, ladies and gentlemen? Fabulous, wasn't she? What a great voice. Let's get my next guest out. One of them is a titan of British show business. He's the star of two of the biggest sitcoms of all time over in our country here, Citizen Smith and my family. Uh, he won a BAFTA for his fantastic performance in the TV drama GBH, an incredible piece of work. In his theatre work, he's uh, the Tony Award, an incredible three Olivier's. Uh, really, you can just go on and on about his career. The other won a charity dancing competition. <laughs> it is Robert Lindsay and Rufus Hound. Come on out, guys. How are you, fellas? We're yeah, very well. Get on. Uh, wow. <laughs> okay, uh, so you're working together. We're going to get on to the whys and wheres in a minute. But um, before we uh, get into what you're actually doing, how much did you know of each other before you started working together? Robert, how much did you know of Rufus's <laughs> career? And Rufus, you Sorry. must have known. You must have watched everything. No, well, I mean, summer. that's the thing. I've grown up watching this man be amazing. Yeah. But, well, that's true. <laughs> But every time I said to anybody I would be working with Robert Lindsay, they went, oh my God, you have to tell him I saw him in. And everybody said something different. You know, such is the, the catalogue of things that this man's been brilliant. I, I didn't, with respect. <laughs> no, I know what you're going to say. It's fine. I didn't know who you were, because, no. but my son did. Yes. And in fact, my son cast you in this. Yes, that's basically what happened. Because we're doing this thing called Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. Which you know, remember the movie Dirty Rotten Scoundrels with Steve Martin and Michael Caine, incredible film, hilarious. Yeah. Right, well, we're doing the musical version of it, which, uh, so it's got music in it. Yes, I, got, <laughs> I, 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 I leapt to that conclusion. But that's right. Um, you can never tell with you, Jonathan. Sometimes I just think you're smiling and nodding. I don't know how much actually gets processed. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, did you say something? Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember your intro? Yeah. <laughs> He's not forgotten the intro. Yeah. Right. But, um, this guy, um, I don't think you'd sung, had you? No. You'd not danced, had you? Well, only on telly. Well, you've got a natural no, ability. I mean on stage, for... you know, no, no, but that's it. The only dancing I've ever done have been for like charity things on telly. Are you scared? Are you not? Yeah, you're I'm nervous. terrified. You're against with the plow and... Well, because I did one man, two governors take over from James Corden, who won a Tony for that role. Yep, and I job. thought, well, the next thing I'd do, I need to have the bar set a lot less high. <laughs> so I'll just take over from Steve Martin. <laughs> wow, you change with every role. You're like some kind of weird, dough-faced chameleon. Yeah, but Francis Henschel, that role, he's a big, fat boy. So I got to eat like an absolute twat. Wow. It was the best role you could ever have. They were like, would you mind putting some weight on? I was like, do I? <laughs> it was amazing. How great to be told to put them. But you, you've kept so lean. How do you do it? I mean, I guess, you know, doing this kind of show. <laughs> Tell about your trousers. Ki <laughs> what you your rehearsal trousers. This friendship has really blossomed, yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, You know all these secrets. Yeah. No, no, no. I just happened to be wearing a pair of tight trousers one morning. And whose are they? got a huge luck. They were my son's. Who's That's 15, not true, which is, is it? not bad, is That's it? That's not true, though, is it? Don't lie to Jonathan. <laughs> Who's, whose trousers were they, Robert? Whose trousers were they, Rufus? They were your wife's trousers. Oh. Yes, they were my wife's. <laughs> <laughs> all right, fine. <laughs> we've, all, we've, all, we've all done it. There's nothing to be ashamed of. No, like. exactly, but, thank but you. But we went to Tesco's to get the sandwiches. <laughs> and it was only halfway there. That was when he told me. We were li literally halfway across the road. We're, where we're rehearsing is on a council estate in Vauxhall. We're halfway across the road ready to get a sandwich. He goes, shit, I'm wearing my wife's trousers. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I was talking like that. Well, <laughs> um, Robert, let me ask you about some of your TV uh, performances over the years. Because I imagine, I mean, I, as a kid, I watched, and I'm, I'm only a little bit young than you, but I remember I was a young man seeing you in Citizen Smith. And it was just one of the best TV events. It just happened. Mm. Everyone loved it. Everyone was talking about Wolfie. Do you still get recognised oh, for that? Or the... I did Hamlet at the Royal Exchange, 79, 80. And I, I remember it was, this was a very successful production. And I was in Manchester. And I remember walking down the high street towards to do a matinee. And there was a guy on a roof, a helmet and everything. And he, he, he saw me and he shouted, power to the people! And, I, you know, customer used to do that. You, know, you have to do that, don't you? Yeah. And he slid down the tiles of this roof, and he grabbed hold of the guttering. The guttering snapped. He landed on the awning of a shop. The awning snapped. 
he landed on his feet and came over and asked me for my autograph. <laughs> Wow, that's what no, I'm serious. I was with someone. What and a I, fag. I, well, I, I said, uh, it was really weird because I said to the director, I said, God, and this was like two years after I'd finished. And he said, I said, you know, I'm not going to escape. He said, look, look at the box office. It's, it's full. Yeah. You fill the Royal Exchange. And I, I thought, well, of course. It was 24 million viewers or yeah, whatever it was. It was enormous. I mean, you know, and that was three channels, obviously, but. Uh, uh, Margaret Thatcher came to see you after oh, you played Beckett, is that why? No, I was, I, I was playing King Henry II with Derek, Derek Jacobi as Be Beckett. Okay. And what did uh, uh, our leader, no, our then Derek, leader, Derek, request? Derek asked me, he said that Margaret Thatcher and Dennis were in that night and they'd love to take me to the Savoy for dinner. Well, I'm, I'm from a small mining town in the East Midlands and um, I didn't think that was appropriate. And I said no. And that was fine, but she knocked on my dressing room door and demanded to know why I wasn't having supper with her. And I said, she said, is it to do with my politics? And I said, of course it is. <laughs> and then she suddenly told to tell me what a terrible performance I'd done. <laughs> <laughs> and how wonderful Derek Jacobi was. <laughs> so I thought, okay, fine. But my dad was furious with me. And, and my dad was a big trade unionist and very left wing and, you know, and, uh, I told him, like, Dad, I, let, I didn't go for dinner with And he said, you stupid prat, why? <laughs> and I said, well, she's Margaret Thatcher, you know. You're, he said, but you'll never learn anything if you don't. How do you know what she's like? Wow. And I, you know, I, that's what my dad was like. That's, and he's right. He's absolutely right. I should have gone. Well, know, Rufus, I hope enough. you're learning from this. No, I am. I hope when David Cameron comes and knocks on your door. <laughs> Um, story, I tell you, no, I got, <laughs> no, no, go on, no, go on. no, I got do one more. I, I, when we were doing My Family, the, the Queen was visiting Pinewood. She found herself on the set of My Family. She'd no, obviously never seen it, but she was escorted. Was well, she confused? Because old people get confused. Yeah, sometimes. they do. So she, well, she, she, <laughs> she eventually got tired and sat on the bed. Well, you know, the My Family set was literally a kitchen, a living room, and a bedroom. Yeah. She only got a little bit bored and went and sat on the bed. And so, Did she really? She was sitting on the bed? She sat on the bed. So the Queen was sitting on the microphone. Yeah, but she was really confused why, why there were seats. And she said, so, so what's the seats? And I said, well, that's where the audience... She said, oh, there are people watch you. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, yeah, that's, that's right, Mum. We do. And she said, oh. And Zoe, what are you doing next? Obviously completely bored. And Zoe said, oh, I'm doing much ado about nothing at the National Theatre, Mum. Oh. And Robert? I said, oh, I'm, I'm about to play Aristotle Onassis, Mum. And she said, oh, <laughs> do you have to? <laughs> uh, can I tell you a, a real thing? I'd like to hear this. I'm not really, uh, it's, I'm not really, I'm going <laughs> to... Hold on, are you sure you want to come out right now? No, no, you can't come out right now. No, well, look, if I was gay, I'd be completely super proud of that. What I'm about to come out about is worse. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, th I think I'm going to run as an MEP. Hold it, the MEP? Member of European Parliament. No, I know what it means, but... <laughs> what, why, why, uh, who? Yeah. <laughs> Where? Where? I'm as confused by this as you are. And did you know... No, I, he told me about this, and I'm really... I, I was absolutely, completely gobsmacked when he told me, and I now thought about it for 24 hours. I think it's a fantastic idea, because... I'm going to run for the NHA. Which oh, now, that one I do need you to explain. Yeah, so the NHA is the National Health Action Party um, because the NHS is being privatised. <laughs> but I'm looking around for, like, who's stepping forward and telling people about it, and nobody is. And so it looks like you've got the job. Well, I sat, I sat with my wife, and my wife just went, well, we should do something. And then a month later, she went, you know that thing about us doing something? I think we might be those people who sit around going, why isn't somebody doing something? And it might be that we actually have to do something. So... I think I'm going to end up running as an MEP. What a, what a good man. If you, uh, if you run and you are elected, yeah. please grow back the big weird moustache. Oh. Well, I'll be in Brussels, so I can have one of those absolutely mental yeah. moustaches. <laughs> Did you enter sort of the world's weirdest beard competition? No, the know? World Beard and Moustache Championship. There's nothing weird about that, well, Jonathan. I think it's a little bit unusual. Business for athletes. OK, and where did you place in the World Beard and Moustache competition? I came fourth equal. Wow. In Bavaria, it's taken sort of semi-seriously. Yeah. And then in this country, people realised growing a ridiculous beard or a moustache was quite funny. Yeah. 
And so the British beard and moustache people said to the Bavarians, we'll host it in this country. And they hosted it down in Brighton. And um, all these elderly Bavarians had no idea how funny English people <laughs> But it, it was literally, you know, imagine a catwalk, right, of these men with these kind of oddly ornate beards. Because it's, it's, you're not really processing anything. You're just walking around with a moustache. So these old, old sort of German men just sort of went, <laughs> <laughs> whilst like 5,000 Brightonians went, yeah, you're the man, you are the man, show that moustache, touch, touch, touch. <laughs> they were so confused as wow. to what was going on, wow. as these drunk Brightonians lost their mind about these kind of curly beards. And at the end, the bloke who won it overall came forward and delivered this speech, right, with tears, real, genuine tears in his eyes. I would just like to say, in many years of doing this, this is the greatest day of my life. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole place is going, fucking yeah! Wow. Wow. That's like the X factor yeah. for facial hair. A total privilege. We, we, we need to get that on television. Oh, yeah. OK, ladies and gentlemen, I think you'll agree they're great fun. The show sounds great. I'm going to go and see it. When is it open again? Uh, March 10th at the Savoy, but we're in Manchester and Aylesbury before that. You're doing that before, but the Savoy in London, if you're down here, is one of the most beautiful theatres in the capital. So. Oh, yeah. And all the design, like, it's all Art Deco and the show's going to be Art Deco. It's like you're entering the show before it starts. OK, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> join me in saying thank you to the fabulous Robert Lindsay and Rufus Hound. <laughs> Great to have you here, guys. Still to come after the break, the very funny Sean Walsh and Tiny Temple will be chatting and performing live, so don't go away.